What's up everyone, Patrick here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is an example dealing with sets. So if we define sets A, B, and C over here as follows, we gotta find all of these expressions here. So personally, when I get a question like this, the first thing I like to do is I like to take the definitions of the sets that I'm given and try to simplify them in my mind first and maybe create more simple definitions if possible before going in and finding expressions. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna go through each of these sets and sort of discuss them. So starting with set A, we're told that set A, it's basically all the X values, all the real numbers where two to the power of X is less than 90. So all the real numbers where two to the power of X is less than 90. So to help you sort of visualize this, what we can actually do is graph two to the power of X first. So two to the power of X is just an exponential function that looks like that. However, notice that in this set, two to the power of X has to be less than 90. So if we put 90 here as the Y value, Basically, this set A is all of the X values over here that make this function two to the power of X less than 90. So it's gonna be all of these X values from negative infinity to that X value right there. Notice we can find that X value because we can say, or we can find when does two to the power of X equal 90. So what we can do is we could lawn both sides if we want to isolate for that x, bring the x down, divide both sides by ln 2. So x is going to be ln of 90 over ln of 2. And that's approximately 6.49 if you input it in your calculator. However, you don't want to start bringing decimals into these types of questions. You want to leave everything as exact values. Your prof's probably going to take off marks if you start bringing, it, uh, bringing in decimals. But doesn't hurt to know where we are approximately in terms of numbers. So we're gonna keep everything as exact values, but we're gonna keep that 6.49 in mind, knowing that this is 6.49. So what we can do is we can actually define this set A instead of saying X is an element of real numbers, but all the X values have to be less than ln of 90 over ln of all of these x values right here. Now notice it's not less than or equal to because notice that two to the power of x has to be less than 90. It can't be equal to 90. So this here, we would say x is less than ln of 90 over ln of two. All the real numbers that are less than ln of 90 over ln of two. So let's move on to set B now. So we got the values of x where negative x squared plus nine is greater than zero. Well, notice that negative x squared plus nine, we can actually graph that. That's just a quadratic that's been shifted up by nine units and it's opening down. Okay, we can actually find these intercepts here because we got negative x squared plus nine. When is that gonna equal zero? Well, we can factor out a negative. That's gonna be a difference of squares. So we got negative three, we got positive three over here. Those are the intercepts, the x-intercepts. So when is this function gonna be greater than zero? Well, notice it's gonna be greater than zero above the x-axis over here, like that. So it's basically the x values between negative three and positive three. So we can take this expression in words for set B, and we can rewrite it as basically X being an element of real numbers where X is between negative three and positive three. Notice that it's not equal to negative three and positive three because that would be if the expression said greater than or equal to zero. It's just saying, when is it greater than zero? When is this greater than? zero, not greater than or equal to zero, but greater than zero, right? So this we can rewrite as that right there. And then set C, we're told that X is an element of natural numbers. 
So natural numbers being one, two, three, four, five, basically all the positive integers. Some profs include zero as a natural number. I personally don't. I just include these numbers, all the positive integers. But in this case, that distinction doesn't actually matter because we're told that x is an element of natural numbers where x squared has to be greater than 24. So x squared being greater than 24, that's like x being greater than the square root of 24. And the square root of 24, we know it's four point something. So all the x values that are greater than four point something, that's gonna be five, six, seven, eight, et cetera etc. All the natural numbers greater than that value, the square root of 24, which would start at 5. So we can take this and we can define it as x is all the natural numbers where x is, we can say either greater than 4 or greater than the square root of 24. It doesn't matter because it's still going to start at 5. We can also say all the x values, all the natural numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So multiple ways to take this and sort of simplify it. I'm just going to leave it like this. So all the natural numbers starting at 5 and on. So all the positive integers starting at 5 till positive infinity. Right? So kind of took these and talked about them, sort of simplified the sets. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find all of these expressions. I'm going to just erase some stuff here, give myself room. So the first expression is set A or set B. So notice it's going to be either this or that right here. But notice that B is within set A. So if we sort of draw these on a number line, notice how set A, it's going from negative infinity to ln of 90 over ln of 2. Okay. And then notice that b is between negative 3, which we say, let's say it's like over here, and between positive 3. And ln of 90 over ln of 2, we know that that's approximately 6.49, which is out here. So notice that set b is within set a. So when we say a or b, then According to these definitions, to these sets here, this is not a general rule that I'm about to write, but according to these definitions, basically A or B, that's the same as just set A, according to this specific example, right? Because B is within A. So we don't have to write A or B, we can just say set A. And we know that set A is defined like this. So we can take this and write it as X is an element of real numbers where x is less than ln of 90 over ln of 2, like that. Then another way to potentially write this, we can say x is an element from negative infinity to ln of 90 over ln of 2. But for this video, I'm going to stay with this type of notation here. Right, so that is the expression here for A or B, it's just basically set A. Now, what about A and B? Which is the intersection of both sets. Well, let's write that out again. So we're going from negative infinity to ln of 90 over ln of two. So that there is set A, and then set B is from negative three to positive three. So it's gotta be within set A, and it's got to be within set B as well. And notice again, set B is within set A in this specific example. So A and B would just be the set B in this case. Because again, B is within A. Now if A and B were separated and there was only a certain intersection here, then it would be this set here but we're not dealing with this type of example. Basically, we're given a set A and set B is within set A. So set um, A and B would be just set B. Okay, so that um, would be 
just the definition for set B. So it's x is an element of real numbers where x is between negative 3 and positive 3, like that. So this is A or B, this is A and B right here. Now the next one they asked for was set B or C. So this or that right there. And notice that these two are very different. They're actually separated. So if we draw a number line, negative 3 and positive 3, that is set B. But notice that set C is basically all the natural numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So starting at 5, 6, 7, 8, etc., etc. All the integers from 5 till positive infinity. Notice that that is set C right there. So when they're asking for B or C, well, we basically got to write both of these uh, notations, both of these sets here, because we got X is an element of real numbers where X is between negative 3 and positive 3, or X is an element of natural numbers where X is greater than or equal to. 5. Okay, so we can't sort of combine these two brackets because this bracket, quote unquote, this set here is dealing with real numbers and this one's dealing with natural numbers. So if they were both dealing with real numbers, we can combine them into one. But because we're talking about real numbers here and we're talking about natural numbers over here, then we got to keep them separate. Because if I try to say x is an element of real numbers from negative 3 to positive 3. And then I said, or x is greater than or equal to 5. What this would mean is that you can actually include these decimals here in between 5 and 6, 6 and 7, 7 and 8, et cetera, et cetera. But we can't be including these values. It's the actual integers from 5 till positive infinity. So I kept it separate, right? So that there is the definition for B or C. Now, what about B and C? What's that going to be? Well, let's write this out one more time. So we got negative 3, got a number line till positive 3. And then we got from 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is C, that is B. Well, when do we have B and C? Well, notice there's no intersection of both of these. These are mutually exclusive. Okay, so B and C, that's actually just the zero set. Okay, because there's no intersection between these. This one ends at positive three, this one begins at positive five. Right, so that's B or C, this is B and C. Now moving on to the next expression, we've got the set difference here. So in set A, but not in set B. That's what this means here. So it's got to be in set A, but not in set B. So again, I'm going to draw this on a number line. So set A goes from negative infinity to ln of 90 over ln of 2, which is approximately 6.49. And then we got negative 3 to positive 3. Remember, set B in this case is within set A. So this here, all the values in set A, but not in set B. So it can't be any of these values here between negative 3 and positive 3. So what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with these values here and then these values over here. So we can rewrite this as x is an element of real numbers where x is less than or equal to negative 3. Notice it's less than or equal to negative 3 because this set B was between negative 3 and positive 3, not inclusive of negative 3 and positive 3. So this remaining portion here is going to include the negative 3. And it goes to negative infinity, so there's no limit. So we just write x is less than or equal to negative 3. Or 
Notice how x can be between 3 and ln of 90 over ln of 2. Notice there's a limit here. It doesn't go till positive infinity, so we can't just write x as greater than or equal to 3. It's between 3, inclusive of the 3, but notice not inclusive of that ln of 90 over ln of 2. Because remember, it's when 2 to the power of x is less than 90, not less than or equal to 90. Right, so this here ends up being x is an element of real numbers where x can be less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to positive 3, but less than ln of 90 over ln of 2. Okay, and then the final one was the set difference between a, set a, and set c. So again, what does this mean? It's in set a, but not in set C. Okay, so if we write set A, it's from negative infinity to ln of 90 over ln of 2. Again, that's approximately 6.49. And then where is set C? Well, notice set C is all the natural numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So if we start here, this is not to scale by the way, but if we start here, so it's going to be 5. 6, and then notice the next one's going to be 7, which is going to be greater than 6.49. So notice that 7 is outside of that set A that we are looking at. So really, all we have to focus on is numbers 5 and 6 for this set C when we're looking at this set difference here. Because again, number 7, the number 7, the natural number 7, is outside of set A. And this here contains all the values in set A, but not in set C. So notice that this here, it's gonna be all the x values that are less than ln of 90 over ln of two. So from negative infinity to that, but they can't equal five, they can't equal six. So there's actually different ways to express this. You can express this in terms of three intervals, which is what I'm gonna do. So it's this interval, this interval, and then that interval. Okay, or you can maybe say that it's basically all the x values that are less than ln of 90 over ln of two, but x cannot equal five and x cannot equal six. But I'm gonna express it in terms of these three intervals here. And notice that there's no intersection of these intervals. They're really sort of separated. So we do have to write all three of these intervals here. Okay, so keeping this diagram here, we're gonna say x is an element of real numbers where x is less than five. Okay, not inclusive of the five, just less than five. So all of these from five, to negative infinity, or if we read from left to right from negative infinity to positive five. So x is less than five. X is between five and six, this interval here. So not inclusive of the five and six. And then x is between six and ln of 90 over ln of two, not inclusive of um, the six and the ln of 90 over ln of two, right? So that there is the expression for that set difference.